The Central Church of Christ is a family-oriented congregation that believes that Jesus the Christ is the head of the church and that the Bible is right. We're comprised of a group of committed, imperfect people who are striving to walk with our Lord and Savior. Yes, Sundays at Central make a difference, but we want to ensure that we're impacting your daily lives. We're dedicated to making a difference, not only in the lives of our church family, but also in our surrounding communities. Central offers several classes, ministries, and programs for people of all ages that we're confident will fit your needs. We'd love to show you why our congregation is the right church home for you. So stop on by and join us for worship service so that you can experience how Sundays at Central make a difference. Welcome to Central Church of Christ, where Sundays at Central make a difference. She Good morning, Central. Here are a few housekeeping reminders before we begin our worship service. Please remember to put electronic devices on silent, wear your mask while in the building, adhere to social distancing, follow the dismissal procedure at the end of worship service, and if you have a precious little one who may get restless, please utilize the mother's room or take them to junior worship. Central, it's time to worship. Worship, to worship, and give God all of the praise. It's time. The only way is Jesus. Good morning. Hasn't our spring gospel explosion been awesome? It's just the spark that we needed. We've heard Brother Eric Doss, and we heard Brother Anthony Walker. And today, Brother Richard Barclay from the Stonecrest Church of Christ in Madonna, Georgia, is going to bring it home. Let's prepare to sing with the Spirit. Before Brother Barclay brings us the message, we speak what has been spoken. Central, let's get started. Tempted and tried, we are all made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested. Farther along, we'll know all of Father alone. We'll understand why. Oh, cheer up, brother. Oh, living the sun. Yes, we'll understand. Stand it all by all by and by when death has come man taken our love it leaves it leaves our home so lonely and dreary then do we wonder Living so wicked year after year. Lift your voice, sing, Father, alone. Under 
cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand all by and this is my verse y'all oh when we see jesus coming in glory well and when he comes from his home in the sky then we shall meet him in that bright man will i will understand it all by somebody help me sing it father father alone will know all of all about father father alone will understand why cheer up my brother living said a living sunshine will under stand it all by all by father 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 alone yeah know all about it father father oh understand why cheer up cheer up my brother living 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 in the sunshine we'll understand it all by one more time father father alone we'll know all of at some point we'll get it father father alone we'll understand why cheer up cheer up my brother living 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 live in the sunshine will under preacher can i do it one more time all back all back one more time father father alone no all no all of father father Understand, understand, cheer up, cheer up, sing, cheer up, my, cheer up your brother and your sister, living the sunshine, we'll understand, all back, one more time, Father, Father, Father alone, no. knows what you're going through father whatever you're going through he'll under under cheer cheer up cheer up my yeah living 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 sunshine will under will understand it say will under will understand it say will under will understand it say will understand it all by and by hallelujah amen once again we are thankful to god we are blessed because of his kindness we live because of his mercy, we have forgiveness. And we have gathered on this afternoon as we close out our three Sunday gospel explosion. And of course, we want to thank our caterer and our sisters for a fine job in serving, encouraging all the brothers who have been a part of. Amen. And of course, Without further delay, our 
preacher really needs no introduction. We have listened to him this morning. And of course, later on, early in the morning, that was Sunday school. But now we are waiting for the message this afternoon. He hails from the Lone Star State, Texas. And of course, preaching the word for 55 plus years. Come on up, my brothers. Yes, I did forget, but they didn't forget. All those who are in the midst and visiting with us, we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And of course, as stated, needs no introduction, preaching the word for 55 plus years, married for 53 years, minister for the Stone Crest Church of Christ. He did a magnificent job this morning sharing with us the truth. And as little children, we await one more time to hear what thus says the Lord. Thus we're calling on our guest song leader one more time, Brother Justin, let's give him a love deposit as well for encouraging us in our singing today. We're gonna to ask that you will please stand to welcome the man of God to lift his spirit and that he may focus on what thus says the Lord and that we will listen by faith. He comes to us once again to deliver nothing but the truth, all the truth, so help him God. And uh, as stated, no introduction, really nothing else but the man himself. Amen. None other than Dr. Richard Barclay. Amen. Let's sing. Let's lift our voices to welcome the herald of truth, the man of God, Richard Barclay. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Oh, join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord and the church said, a 
preacher was standing preaching on one occasion and nothing irritates and aggravates a preacher uh, more than anything else than to see him preaching his heart out and people are trying to sleep on you. <laughs> so on this occasion, the preacher was standing and preaching his heart out. And he looked, and on the front row was a little boy sitting next to his grandfather. And the preacher became so irritated and aggravated that he stopped his sermon. And he said to that little boy, he said, young man, wake your grandfather up. <laughs> the little boy looked up at the preacher and said, uh-uh, I didn't put him to sleep. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, wake up. Wake up. I ain't even start preaching yet. And some of y'all trying to nod on the brother. <coughs> Young man. Yeah, yes. The usher, yeah. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. I want to give you $20. Would you like to have $20? I, I didn't hear you. Would you like to have 20 Okay, come get it. Stop right there. <clears throat> you still want the 20 Come get it. <laughs> Stop right there. You still want the 20? <laughs> Come get it. Stop right there. You still want the 20? <laughs> you, you don't want it no more? You sure you don't want it? I ain't got COVID. You, you, you don't want it? Okay. You can have your seat. I saw another young man who was ushering back there. Where, where, where did he go? Now, you old folk, don't you be raising your hand. Where, where did he go? He, he was, where is he? Stand up, stand up. Okay, did he go out? He's what? He's very shy. Oh, he's very shy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more young folk in the house? <laughs> Under 12 or 10 years old? Man, don't you read? Keep your hand down. <laughs> in, any kid under 12 years old in the house? Under 15? Who would like to have $20? Come on, come on down here. It, it. 
Stop right there. Stop, stop, stop right there. You see it, won't it? All right, have your seat. Now let me go back to the young man. Come on back down here. Come on back down here. I ain't going to stop you. Come on down here. <laughs> stop right there. You want it? Ho, 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 wait, 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 wait. What's my name? How long have I been married? Where am I from? Now y'all follow me. Until it got to the saliva, he trusted me. He trusted me, and he doesn't even know my name. He does not know where I'm from. He does not know how long I've been married. And the preacher gave you and him and everybody else all that information. And until I put some saliva on that $20 bill. See, this is what he didn't understand. The value of $20 does not change because somebody balls it up. The value of 20 doesn't change because somebody throws it on the floor and put their size 12 on it. The value doesn't even change because I put some saliva on one end of it. Now, he could have very well come up here and grab one of those three other ends uh -huh. and went back there and wiped that stuff off uh -huh. and washed this, and it has still been worth $20. Your value does not change with God because somebody has put their hands on you or put their feet on you, a ball you up and threw you away. Watch this. Your value does not change. Watch this. If you trust God. Somebody better hear me preach this this afternoon. Now, he trusted me without knowing my name. Watch this. You know who God is. It really ought to be easy for us to trust God, given who he is. He trusts a stranger to a certain point. And we don't trust the God that we know. Now, before you go back to your seat, you need to know what it means to trust God. Listen to the passage of Scripture. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, watch this. Trust in the Lord with what? With all thine heart. And then watch this. And then lean not to your what? 
That's what he did. It got to a point where he said, all right, now you're going to put some spit on that. And so what he did was he stopped trusting and start, he started leaning. And what I said, he was even willing to give up $20. Man, I see you later. I'm going back to my seat. I get it from him. I don't get it from you. I understand it from him. You, how old are you? You're nine years, I, I get it from nine. I don't get it from 29. But watch this. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Watch this. In all thy ways do what? Oh, my goodness gracious. Ah, let me tell you what acknowledge means. It means to act on what you know. Because you cannot act on what you don't know. In all of our ways, watch this, acknowledge him and he will do what? He will direct that path. Now, watch this. And uh, won't be long, but I sure hope to be strong. Watch this. Trust in the Lord. Let me tell you what it means to trust. I want you to go to the front seat. Stretch out. Mm -mm. Stretch out. That's all right. All right. Put, put, yeah, there you go. He is, watch this, stretched out. The Hebrew word for trust is a word that literally means to stretch out on. It means to place, watch this, your full body weight on an object that you believe can sustain your weight. Watch this. Don't, don't you go to sleep, boy. Wake, wake, wake up. You, no, no, stay stretched, but you're getting too comfortable, all right? Now, I want you to watch this. When you came in here today, how many of you looked underneath these pews to see how many legs were under them? Watch this. You what? You trusted. And you stretched out on believing in the integrity of this preacher and this leadership that they would not put pews out that would not sustain your weight. You didn't even take the time to look under them. You just parked it on them. That's what trust is. When the, <clears throat> I lived in Houston, Texas, Pretty sure the Catherine Garden Church. Our youngest son, we got two. Uh, our youngest son uh, got an invitation, uh, uh, willing to play for the Lebanese international basketball team in Lebanon. And he came home all excited. Said, Dad, listen, I got this invitation to play basketball. He'd already played college ball at uh, Southwestern, uh, and, and, and now he got this invitation to play ball for the Lemon, uh, Lebanon, the Lebanese International Basketball League. And he says, Dad, uh, uh, you know, be excited for me. I couldn't get excited for him. I didn't want to mess with his hopes, his dreams, nor his future. I knew something about Lebanon that he didn't know. It's in the Middle East. It's a hotbed of politics and war. Gaddafi and all of that gang were over there at the time. And I knew that if a war broke out over there, I was going to have a hard time trying to get him out of that country. 
but I didn't want to mess with his dreams. So I asked his mother to join me in asking God to close that door. I wish I had a church in this house. We pray, Lord, 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 do something. Close this door of opportunity for him. He's young. He's excited. Uh, he's adventurous. But he hadn't calculated all of the risks. So, Lord, would you do something? And then one night, about midnight, I get a telephone call. He's on the other line. He said, Papi, don't tell mama. Okay, let me try this again. It's 12 o'clock at night. The telephone rings. He said, don't tell mommy. He said, but dad, I had an accident. I said, an accident. About that time, she said, oh, no. That's why he said, don't tell mommy. I said, son, what happened? She said, give me the phone. I said, sister girl, just take a chill pill. Let, let, let me find out what's going on. And, and, and he said, dad, I was playing a pickup basketball game, YMCA, downtown Houston. I stole the ball from a, an opponent, went on to make up a layup, and uh, he ran under me. I lost my balance, and now I've broken my wrist. And I'm now at Methodist Hospital in the emergency room, and I had been transported uh, by EMTs. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Okay, y'all ain't, ain't trying to feel the brother. I said, thank you, Jesus. He said, Papi, come on down and see about me. He said, but don't tell mommy. Well, she's already heard the conversation. She's already addressing. And I said to her, I said, now, nah, girlfriend, I'm going to take care of this. I need you still. Uh -uh, that's my baby. I said, girlfriend, I know. I'm, I'm going to go down to the hospital. I'm going to take care of this. As soon as I assess the situation, I'm going to call you. See, y'all ain't feeling me here. Yeah, see, see y'all ain't understanding. Uh, you, you see, I would have had a wreck on the way down there because of her passionate care and love for her son. And I said, no, no, it's only going to be one bar clay in the hospital tonight, and he's already there. Stay here. She said, you promise? I, I I'll let you know. I get down to the hospital and watch this. He's on a one passenger bed called a gurney. And he's stretched out. He said, Dad, this bed is uncomfortable. I said, Son, when you are in an emergency situation, your comfort is of no concern. They are trying to get you to a place where they can do you the best good. So just hang in there. Y'all done missed the preaching point. He's on a one passenger bed. And, and watch this. And he's stretched out. I'll get back to that in just a second. But, but, but he says, uh, he said, now, nah, he, he said, Papa, you didn't tell Mama, did you? Now, some of you men can sit here and look at me like you have the Lord sitting on your lap. <laughs> now, some of you fellas sitting here looking at me like, like, like y'all ain't seen since Noah docked the ark. <laughs> fellas, I can't get no telephone call at 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> Rupert, would you help me preach this thing? I can't get a telephone call at no 12 o'clock at night and just get up and leave the house and not say nothing to nobody. You don't need to sit here and look at me like that. And he said, Dad, I'm uncomfortable. I want you to see the picture. 
he's stretched out. His weight, like this young... <laughs> what you doing? He down here looking at his money. Get, get up, get up, get up, get up. Go, go, go on back to your seat. <laughs> he ain't bit more hurt nothing. I said he down there looking at his money. To trust means stretch out. It means to lay out. It means to put, watch it. And it says, trust in the Lord with, with all your what? Watch this. God wants to be your gurney and not your crutch. Now watch this. When you are on crutches, you can use some of your own weight to maneuver yourself around. Yeah. God is saying, I don't want to be your crutch. I want to be your gurney. I want you to stretch out on me. The sin the church has committed the last three and a half years is we trusted Dr. Fauci. We trusted CDC. We trusted vaccines, Moderna, Pfizer. I done had all four of them. And if they say I need to take a fifth one, I'm going to get that one too. But in the midst of all of that stuff, the church has not become utterly dependent upon God. And let me tell you why you can trust God. Isaiah 40, 16 says that God declares the end from the beginning. I try to tell you in Sunday school, you and I operate from beginning and we go to the end. God operates from the end and he works his way back to the beginning. That's why there are never any emergencies in heaven. God then already seen tomorrow. God has already been to your funeral. He declares the end from the beginning. God saw COVID coming. And watch this. I don't believe God sent it, but I sure do believe God allowed it. And one of the reasons he allowed it was to see whether or not his people would trust him more than the government. Now listen, protect yourself. I tell, you know, we, we are mask optional uh, in our worship services. Uh, if you want to wear your mask, you can wear the mask. Choose not to wear your mask. You don't have to wear your mask. And I told the church, only one I can make do anything is Shirley. <laughs> Y'all better hear me. I told her, uh, listen, uh, you wear your mask every Sunday. I know you have the option not to wear it. I said, you wear your mask because you're going to have to be the one to protect me lest I get COVID. Amen. I'm the only one responsible for my health. I'm the only one responsible for the health and the welfare of my wife. In fact, at the beginning of COVID, I called our boys and said, listen, if I die during COVID, uh -huh. check the death certificate. Investigate the death certificate. If, I, if it said I died of a heart attack or stroke, don't believe it. I said, if I die of anything during COVID, I'm going to die of asphyxiation. Because every time I walked in the house, come in from the office, first lady tell me, take off all your clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I had a lapse. Uh, uh, uh. She said, take off all your clothes. I said, down here? Right now? 
Luther ain't low. Ooh. Y'all been saved too long for me. And watch this. She would spray me down. And then take all those clothes and put it in the washing machine, wash all those clothes, and then make me go upstairs and take a shower. I was going to die. I ain't got time to fool with y'all. Watch this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then watch this. I'm almost through. And don't lean on what you understand. See, we lean on information from government. And, and I'm not saying you should have ignored all of that stuff. I'm saying that we were learning as we went along. I mean, at one point you had to stand six feet, then it went to three feet, then, then you had to have a mask, but then you had to have a certain kind of mask. And, and we went through all of that. And then watch this. And in the process, we ended up with two churches. The church in the house and the pajama church of Christ. Now we got folk on Sunday morning who stream, who do it virtually. And folk, and for those of you who may be at home watching me right now, look, all, all I'm saying to you is this. You don't stream Kroger's or Walmart or the workplace. Come on, you go everywhere else. I told you in Sunday school this morning, the church has been so concerned about being exposed to COVID that COVID has exposed the church. So when you know the church ain't growing like it once was, don't blame that on COVID. The church wasn't growing before COVID. But what it has exposed is our lack of faith, our lack of trust, our lack of dependency on God. I'm not telling you to ignore all of these uh, suggestions uh, from, uh, from medical people. I'm saying, like I tell our folk all the time, I believe in doctors, I believe in medicine, but I trust in the Lord. Amen. And God can heal with or without medicine. Okay, I'm fighting fried chicken now, so let me hurry up. Watch this. Trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, watch this, acknowledge him. The word acknowledge is spelled A C K. Uh, N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E. See, it's a contraction for act and knowledge. We just didn't put the T in there. It simply means to act on what you know about God. Ooh, God is faithful to us even when we are not faithful to him. Stretch out, don't lean, and then act on what you know about God. Yes, sir. And watch this. And when you do that, the text says, he will then direct your path. Oh, yeah. Can I tell you what the, the word direct means? Uh, it was a term that was used by armies, uh, when there were not roads and highways and their engineers and architects would go where there were no highways, take crooked paths and make them straight so that the army behind them could get where they needed to go 
in the most direct kind of way. Watch this. When you stretch out on God, when you don't lean on what you understand, when you act on what you know about God, God will take, watch this, crooked paths and make them straight. Can I let you in on a little insight here? Not only will he make crooked paths, he will remove crooked people out of your path. Oh, Jesus. Watch this. A couple of you came up to me and said, Brother Barclay, I heard you preach last Sunday uh, in uh, Atlanta. Let me refresh your minds and inform the rest of you what I preached last Sunday. Psalm 77, verse 19, where God says, that my way is in the sea and my path in the great waters and my footsteps are not known. Mm -hmm. Watch this and I'll bid you good evening. My way is in the sea. My path in the great waters and watch this and my footsteps are not known. God is trying to tell that audience what I'm trying to tell you today. You have to learn how to trust when you can't trace and when you can't track. My way is in the sea. Not the dry land. See, on dry land, if you walk somewhere, you're going to leave what? You're going to leave tracks. And you're going to leave footsteps. God says, my footsteps are not known. So watch this. God says, when I walk, I don't leave any what? I don't leave any tracks. So you have to trust me when you can't track me. You have to trust me when you can't trace me. When I was a Boy Scout, they told us when we were in the woods, if we ever got lost, you, you could take a towel, take a handkerchief and tie it around a tree. You could take a limb off the tree and just break the limbs. And wherever you are, just, just break the limbs. And when people pick up that the limbs are being broken, now they are tracking you and they are tracing you. But watch this. When you are at sea, you take a handkerchief and you throw it in the water. What's going to happen? Ain't nobody going to find you. If you take some limbs and throw them in the water, ain't nobody going to find you. Because when you're at sea, watch this, every direction looks exactly the same. So what God is saying is this, when you can't trace me and when you can't track me, trust me. And how do we trust your God? We stretch out on you. We don't lean on us and we act on what we know about you. If you're here this day, you've been trusting your education, you've been trusting your degrees, you've been trusting your bank account, you've been tr 
trusting your friends. You've been trusting your family. God calls you today. Stretch out on him. And then he says, do it with all your heart. I invite you now through faith, repentance, confession, baptism in water to trust the one who wants to save you. Would you do it right now? As together we're standing. Yes, I'm learning, learning to live. I'm learning, learning to live. Yes, I am learning, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Yes, I am fine, I'm finding more, oh, than I ever dreamed, yes, I I'm learning to live on oh, Jesus. Yes, I am learning, learning to live. Every day I am learning, I'm learning to live. Yes, I'm learning, I'm learning to live. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed. Yes, I am learning. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. By the love of Christ, I made a vow to give him my life. At the potter's table, on the potter's wheel, mold and shape me, Lord, that I may be filled and live in memory. What you did for me, for me. Oh, yeah. How you set me free, set me free, set me free. At dark Calvary, yeah. I want to be one of yours. I want to be a worthy vessel. A one that is ready. One that's ready. I want to be used by you. I want to be, I want to be a worthy vessel. Lord, I want to do, do, do just what, what you want me to. Teach me and show me do, truly do, how to love. Do, do, just like that sacrifice do, do, from heaven above. Do, do, Perfect union had never been broken. Stronger words had never been spoken from you. It is finished. Teach me how to finish a copy love from heaven above. Wanna live in memory? I wanna live. How you set me free? What you did set me free? Heavenly, heavenly. I want to be a worthy vessel. Want to be used. Want to be used by you. I want to be. I want 
to be a worthy vessel. I want to do, do, do. One that's ready to be used by you.